I see far too many real estate investors get into real estate investing without even being familiar with the term ARV, without even having the most basic understanding of how to calculate the after repair or after rental value of a property. And that's really scary to me. I mean, if you don't know where your end post is, or if you've just arbitrarily set that goal without really having any background, any information to support it, you're setting yourself up for failure. It's one of those failure to plan is a plan for failure situation, guys. So, in today's video, we're going to talk about what ARV is. I'll break out for you exactly what it stands for, what it means, how you should be using it as a real estate investor to improve your real estate investing strategies, and I'll show you some basic examples so you get a rough idea of how to do this. But, before we jump into that, just some quick housekeeping. Uh, you've probably noticed my channel's been a little quiet recently, and it's because I'm actually just getting over the chicken pox. So, uh, I'm still not 100% right now, but I'm getting there. So, uh, you know, I'd love it if you smash that like button, give me some positive encouragement, but uh, I'm hoping to get back on schedule this week. So uh, let's, uh, let's just jump into it. So ARV stands for after repair or reno value. So you'll see that these two words are used interchangeably by a lot of real estate investors. Don't get caught up on it, it doesn't really matter. The key here is it's after you've done your renovations or your repairs to the property, you get it up to its full actual value, its full potential value. And so if you're new to my channel, you may have never even heard of ARV before, but the reason that we talk about ARV so much on this channel is because I use what's called the burn investing strategy. And now whether you're doing the burn investing strategy or flipping real estate, you're gonna to need to know what ARV is in order to calculate your potential profit calculate your potential margin and figure out what you're gonna make on that deal. So quick refresher, when we're looking at whether burning a property or flipping a property, we're usually looking to buy it for 40 to 60% of the ARV. We want to reno it for 10 to 30% of the ARV. So we want to end up approximately all into the property, including the holding, closing, and all those additional costs. We want to end up 70 to 80% of the ARV. So just to break out a quick example for you guys, if we're looking at an ARV of 200,000 on a property, we'd be looking to buy it for 80 to 120,000. We'd be looking to spend about 20 to 60,000 renovations, which would mean we're gonna end up about 140 to 160,000 all in on the property. So that difference between the 140 and 160 and that 200, that's gonna be our margin, that's gonna be our potential profit if we're flipping the property, or that's gonna allow us to access all of our equity if we're burning the property and gonna refinance it and pull out our money. And so this all sounds great in theory, but where a lot of real estate investors get caught up is, how do I actually figure out what this 200,000 is? How do I figure out that this property is gonna be worth 200,000 after I spend that 20 to 60,000 renovations? So in my mind, there's really two approaches to determine what the ARV of a property is gonna be. It's either gonna be an apples to apples comparison or you're gonna focus on quantitatively determining the value of the property. So we're gonna break out for you right now the two approaches. So when trying to do an apples to apples comparison, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sift through all the information that's out there in the market and look at key factors, key factors such as the age of the property, the size of the property, the style or layout of the property, the finishes on this specific property, as well as the amenities and locations of the property, and the number of beds and baths that are in this property specifically. So when we're talking about the age of the property, you're trying to find apples to apples comparisons. It doesn't really make sense to take a property that was built 100 years ago and compare it to a property that was built only 10 years ago. They're gonna be functionally and structurally significantly different. So when trying to find a great comparison for the property that you're looking at, let's call that property A, there's no sense in looking at property B as a comp if it's 100 years older than property A. That It's just not apples to apples here. Same goes for the size of the property. So you're gonna be looking for a property that's probably within 10 to 20% of the property that you're trying to compare it against. So again, it doesn't make sense to take that 1,500 square foot property and compare it against a 10,000 square foot property. They're just on two completely different scales of magnitude. Same with style and layout. Even when you get into the exact same subdivision on the exact same street, not all the houses are gonna be built equally. For example, in some of the neighborhoods I invest in, particularly near Fanshawe College, there's a neighborhood where about three or four different styles of houses were built. And for example, in that neighborhood, you got things like a backsplit, you got a raised ranch, you got a bungalow, and you got just kind of a more and you got more of a traditional just two-story family home. So again, it doesn't make sense to take that bungalow and compare it against a raised ranch necessarily because the raised ranch generally is going to have much better features. It's going to have the vaulted ceiling. It's going to have a much more picturesque street front as well. 
Same goes for finishes. So even though that neighborhood by Fanshawe College, even though all those houses were built within the last 20 to 30 years, so they're all within the same timeline, and let's say I even find the same style and layout, so I'm comparing a bungalow to a bungalow, one thing I need to continue to keep in mind is the finishes. So if my property is gonna be fixed and updated to its utmost potential, if I'm gonna spend 10 or $20,000 on renovations today, and the property I'm comparing it against is actually hasn't been updated for 20 years, that's gonna be something I need to take in consideration as well. Finally, you're gonna be looking at the amenities and location. So again, it doesn't make sense to compare a property on the very south end of the city with the very north end of the city. They're two completely different neighborhoods. Same thing goes for if you got the wrong side of the tracks or the wrong side of the river or the wrong side of the highway. All those factors need to be taken into consideration when you're trying to get an apples to apples comparison. And finally, the number of bids and baths. And so bids and baths are extremely important, particularly in my market at least, I know that by adding an additional bid or an additional bathroom, if I'm not seriously compromising the living space of the property, that I'm going to be actually adding value, particularly in a student neighborhood. So in the neighborhoods I invest in by Fanshawe College, for example, I know that adding an additional bedroom, going from a four to a five bedroom property, is probably going to add four to five hundred dollars a month in gross rent which usually means it's going to add somewhere close to forty or fifty thousand dollars to the value of that property to an investor so that's great you now got a giant list of information that you're going to need to figure out in order to create your apples to apples comparison in order to determine your ARV or your after repair or after reno value but where are you going to get that information so the two sources of the information in my opinion are the realtor or the MLS or geo warehouse and so in that case, you're going to use your realtor, reach out to them and get access to the resources they have. So in particular, your realtor is going to have access to the MLS or realtor.ca, and there's a ton of information in there. They'll be able to break out the exact square footage, as well as all kinds of additional information about the property, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, the age of a lot of the mechanicals of the building as well. The, your realtor can reach out to their realtor and find out more information as well. Secondly, your realtor has access to Geo Warehouse, and so what's great about Geo Warehouse, in Canada at least, is it gives you access to all the sales in an area, and you can even create a little map and figure out exactly just the the neighborhoods you want to target to find out what properties we're selling for in your area. Now in general, what sort of age are we looking for on the comparable sales? Well, we're going to be looking at ideally in a hot market, three to six months, and more balanced market, you could take up to a year for your comps. And then secondly, our, we're just going to do a lot of research ourselves, so that's going to be literally just Googling the address of the property. We're going to be looking at the city or states or municipal websites in order to determine kind of if the property has licensing, if it's got any bylaw infractions, if it has currently any work orders outstanding. As well, just walking the street and literally just getting to know the street and walk by your apple to apple comparisons to really get a feel for it. You can get a lot accomplished on Google Street View, but nothing beats walking the street yourself. So yeah, that's kind of the apples to apples comparison. So as you can see, you're going to need to become an expert in the area you want to invest in in order to determine the after repair value. So again, in summary, what we're doing with these apples to apples comparisons, we're gonna be literally looking for properties that are similar to the property that we're working on and go and determine what those properties sold for. So the way you're gonna get access to that information is through your realtor as well as doing your own research. Now let's look at the quantitative approach to determining ARV. So for quantitatively approaching or determining ARV, we're gonna be looking at all kinds of similar calculations that are used by other real estate investors or other buyers in the market. So in particular, we're going to be looking at the dollar per square foot, cap rate, as well as gross rent multiplier, as well as kind of whatever metrics are being used in your market by buyers of real estate. And so some of the most common ones are though dollar per square foot. And so that's where maybe buyers are used to paying 100 or $200 per square foot to buy a property, in which case you're simply going to take the total square footage of the property times it by that dollar amount to determine a ballpark figure. It's going to give you a starting point and then you may have to adjust for unusual amenities that your property has or doesn't have. Alternatively, especially for multifamily properties, cap rate is really huge. And so cap rate is simply taking the income from the property, adjusting it for any debt service costs so those are removed and determining what the return on the property is. And then so that's simply expressed as a ratio between the price of the property to the actual return from the property, ignoring any debt service costs. And quick sidebar, if you're not familiar with what cap rate is, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll do a whole separate video or series of videos explaining cap rate. It's actually a pretty simple concept, but I see a lot of real estate investors confusing cap rate, net income, cash flow, and just kind of merging all those three terms together. They're very different terms and they need to be treated differently because they have different impacts on the return and the type of returns you're gonna see. 
And finally, another common calculation is the gross rent multiplier. And so this may simply be that people are used to paying maybe three or four or seven or 10 times what the gross rent is for the property. Again, it's gonna be very dependent on your market. You're gonna to have to determine this from just talking to other real estate investors, talking to other realtors, and talking to appraisers in your market. So hopefully you got a better understanding now of what ARV stands for, as well as how you can actually implement it. Now, again, like most of the strategies I discuss on my YouTube channel, there's no silver bullet for this. There's no one solution. As you saw, you're gonna to have to become an expert and do tons of research and work yourself, but it will pay off. It'll ensure that you're buying great real estate deals. So I'd love it if you guys jumped in the comment section down below and let me know, do you guys use ARV? Do you use a lot of similar methods I use or how do you approach determining what the after repair value of a property is when you're looking to burr it or flip it? And what tips do you have for your fellow viewers? Jump in the comment section down below and let's share our information guys. Sharing is caring and speaking of sharing is caring, make sure you share this video on social media if you enjoyed it. Honestly, Facebook is the only way I'm getting new viewers these days, Facebook or Reddit. So if you could share this on Facebook or on Reddit, that'd be huge. Or if you didn't like this video, share your favorite video of mine on Facebook or Reddit. I'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to reach 5,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and uh, it's, it's looking like it's gonna be really tight. Anyway, smash that like button if you enjoyed this video, and until next time, I'm Matt McKeever. Remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money out there for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point? Thanks, guys. Bye.